Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate, JJ. So today we, uh, we continue on our uh, Maxitronic Sensor Robot 20. This is the 20 in 1 project lab. Uh, we're up to the third circuit, which is uh, electronic candles. So uh, it's the third circuit that uses a CDS cell um, uh, to vary the, the brightness of some LEDs. So uh, let's pop you over to the booth. We'll put the project together. Once that's done, we'll bring it over to the bench and have a look at it. Here we are in the booth. I'm just getting ready to uh, put together project three of our Sensor Robot 20 in 1. This is uh, electric candles. So let's just uh, take, take the wires from the previous circuit out and then we'll get on with it. So uh, the long wires are yellow and then blue and then red and the small wires are white. Oh dear. All right, Ripper. So I'll throw you over to the book cam and we'll have a look at the uh, at the circuit that we're going to be building. As I said, this is project three, the electric, electronic candles. What it does, this project uses the CDS cell to turn on each LED candle. You can amaze your friends with your electronic magic show. Finish the wiring. Now you can perform magic. First, darken the room. Next, adjust the control slowly clockwise to a point where the LEDs just turn on. Turn the control in the opposite direction to extinguish the indicators. Finally, announce to your audience that you can light the candles with a flashlight beam. Wave the flashlight near the CDS cell. The LEDs light. First the right one, then the left. In a, norm, in, a, in a room with normal lighting, adjust the knob so that both LEDs just light. Cup your hand near the cell and blow out the candles. As you reduce the light falling on the cell, the indicators go out. You can use your flat flashlight match to light them again. How it works. When the CDS is illuminated, its resistance is low and the, circuit, and the current flows to the base of Q5. The amplified current flows from the emitter of the transistor to, transistor to the 1 kilo ohm and 1.8 kilo ohm resistors. At the same time, because of a voltage at the emitter of Q5, both Q3 and Q4 are turned on. If you slowly reduce the level of light falling on the CDS, the CDS's resistance becomes higher. Then the current to the base of Q5 and the current from the emitter to the 1 kilo ohm and 1.8 kilo ohm resistors decrease. The, the emitter current is always kept lower than the base current. As the voltage of the Q5 emitter drops, current from Q3 to the left LED goes off first. Then the current from Q4 drops and the right LED goes out. There you go. So this looks like a pretty easy one to put together. Let's, uh, let's pop you over there. So you should be able to follow along uh, as I wire this together. Let me just move that across a bit. <coughs> All right, here we go. So uh, one to three. One to three is our staple start, isn't it? It's just wiring the power supply into the control switch. So that's a good way to start. Then we've got uh, six to 61. Six to 61. Six is the midpoint of the, uh, of the control uh, resistor. And 61 is Q5. Okay, so we've got six, which is the control resistor, to 61, the base of Q5. All right. And then we've got seven to 15. Seven to 15, 15 is our CDS cell again. So far, all of our circuits have been using the CDS cell. This is the third project in the kit and it's the third project that uses the CDS cell. So that's seven to 15. And then we've got 19 to 39. So there's 19, oh, it's one of our LEDs. And 39 looks like it's down here. So we're gonna need a good long cable for that one. Will that fit? No, we need a yellow. It's yellow. Just confirming, that's 19 to 39. 19 to 39. Oh, you know that blue might have done it after all. Anyway, yellow is still good, as long as we don't run out of yellows. There's only four of them, I think. All right, and then, then there's 20 to 18. So 20 to 18. Okay, so it looks like... Um, Twenty to eighteen. Oh, I see. So this is the uh, the cathode of the uh, LEDs. Both of them are together, so they'll get wired into ground, I suppose. Yep, that's what we're going to do now. Oh, they're they're not into ground; they're into positive. So that's uh, twenty to eighteen, and then eighteen to four. There we go. And then uh, 4 to 14. 4 to 14. Back over to the CDS cell. So that's uh, 4 to 14. And then 14 to 62. Now 62 
is the collector of Q5. Just confirming, uh, 14 to 62. 14 to 62. And then we've got 21 to 25. 21, where is that? Here. And 25. No. 45. 21 to 45. Of course, you see 25 is part of the integrated circuit over here, which is not being used. So that's what that surprised me about. But I got it wrong. It's 21 to 45. And 45 is down here. Okay. Will blue make it across? I think it will. 21 to 45. <clears throat> and then uh, 40 to 52. 40 to 52. 52 is our resistor over here. So this is uh, the resistor connected to the base of Q3, and 52 is the 1.8 kilo ohm resistor. And then we've got uh, 52 to 49, 52 to 49. Okay, looks like we're gonna connect the uh, 49 is the uh, 1K resistor, we're connecting that to the 1.8K resistor. And then we've got 44 to 63. Where is 44? 44 is here, and 63 is here. So 63 is the emitter of Q5. And 44 is the 10K resistor connected to Q4, which is our, our transistor. All right, 63. And then uh, 63 to 50. Now where is 50? Just over there, it's a short one. 63. All right, 63 to 50. And then we got 48 to 42. So 48 is here and 42 is here. Okay, that's easy. And We've got 42 to 5. So 5's up here for the um, the variable resistor. 42 and 5. And then 5 to 2. So that's just putting power into the circuit. So that's the, the negative uh, power supply connected to the variable resistor. And then 2 to 51. 2 to 51. Where is 51? There it is over there. Okay. Looks like a blue, I reckon. So it's just 2 to 51. 2 to 51. <laughs> now, I note that in this circuit, we're using three transistors, but we are not using any capacitors. So this circuit is not a multivibrator. But it does use... Uh, uh, transistors to turn things on and off. And of course, those things are the, are the uh, LEDs, which are the robot's eyes. So um, yeah, I think that's the circuit fully assembled. So I'll, I'll pop you over to the bench and we'll have a look at it. Here we're at the bench. Uh, it's gonna plug power into our circuit. So we've got uh, negative power here and positive power here. Now, if we uh, just turn the power supply on and then on we go and there it is, okay. So the lights don't light up evenly. So um, let's cover him up a bit and go there. So if we take that away, the lights come up. There you go. So uh, it's just an example of how you can, uh, actually, you know, this is, uh, this is not a, um, digital circuit, those those LEDs, they are, th their brightness varies um, because the, um, the, the resistor uh, increases or decreases. So um, it's not a binary uh, kind of an on or off uh, story for these LEDs. They're actually, um, their brightness is, is a function of the resistance. So uh, what should we do here? 
I'll tell you what, let's just uh, connect that there and we'll put him there and I'll just grab another one of these probes and we'll pop him on number channel two and uh, we don't need to connect the negative end of our probe and we'll have that guy there. So if we hit, uh, first of all, let's get them both completely on. They're completely on. And on the scope, we just hit auto. So we've got two, uh, two signals there. And uh, if we close it off, they change. There's a little bit of noise there, isn't there? I don't know what, what accounts for the noise, but you can see that um, the levels go high and low depending on the light that we allow onto the, uh, onto the CDS cell. So put that there, and uh, and we can see the change in voltage. Actually, uh, I tell you, um, I'll just pop out the good old multimeter, and we'll put it in to measure some volts. Can you see that there? You can. Good. So just uh, put him in there, and him in there, and let's get the. Um, Let's get the voltage across uh, each of these. So, should be, oh, it's two volts. Interesting. And two volts again. I was expecting uh, less. Or was I? I don't know. So the voltage drop across these LEDs seems to be 2.07 or 2.06. And if we, uh, if we turn the we turn them down a bit, then uh, the first one, voltage at the moment, is 1.78, and the second one is 0 0.5 volts, which is not visible. That's not it. It's not enough voltage to uh, to, to to light the, the the lead. This one is legible at approximately 1.8 volts. So there you go. I give it plenty of light, and the and the LEDs come right up. So that's just uh, another example of how you can use a CDS cell uh, to to vary to, to sense to sense light uh, and the, and the various ways you can respond to it. In this case, by proportionately lighting the LED. So that's it. That was the end of uh, project number three, electronic candles. Now I would have thought that if you were going to make a circuit and call it candles, that the um, the, the light should flicker a little bit because isn't that kind of the thing about a candle is like it flickers a little bit These things don't really flicker. Uh, they do go on and off and they sort of fade, but it's kind of a linear fading It's it's incremental and smooth. It's not flickery um, But uh, yeah, there you go. So that was uh, that was circuit number three We we, uh, we used the multimeter just to get a read across the uh, the uh, LEDs Of course, it was unsurprising to discover that uh, when they were low power the voltage was low when they're at full power There was about two volts each across them um, and that stacks, I think, basically with my experience. Um, the transistors were involved. There was no oscillator in the circuit, no capacitors. Um, we did throw the, the two signals, which are the LEDs, into the uh, oscilloscope. Uh, and of course, we just saw what you'd expect to see, which is the level goes up and it goes down. It's a binary sync, uh, sort of uh, on and off sort of thing. And I have to say, I find uh, measuring those sorts of things on the oscilloscope, um, because they're, they're sort of absolute things and not relative things, uh, I find it's better to use the digital multimeter to measure voltages rather than the oscilloscope. But of course, the oscilloscope can do it. It's just not really its main use case, I don't think. Um, so uh, that concludes project three. Uh, up next will be project four, which is light alarm with latch. So that'll be another uh, CDS cell uh, project number four. So if you want to see that, stick around. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.